on Thursday, July 31st, 1980, in the small town of New Holland, located in the state of Pennsylvania in the United States, something would happen that would leave the whole community afflicted. On that day, Evelyn Fisher, a 14-year-old girl, left her home to clean the neighboring house. That house was number 115 on Rank Avenue and was right across from the girl's house. Evelyn used to clean the houses in the neighborhood to help with the family's income, and since the neighborhood they lived in was considered safe, her parents never saw any problems with that. However, unlike the other days, on this one, the hours passed until night fell and the girl didn't return home. With that, her parents were very worried, and at a certain time they decided to go to the front neighbor's house to look for their daughter. When they arrived at the place, they realized that all the lights in the house were off, as if there was no one there, which was strange because those who lived there used to leave most of the lights on, even when the house was empty. Evelyn's parents called for her, but neither the young woman nor the owner of the house answered. Obviously, this made her parents even more worried and they decided it was best to report it to the authorities. In a few minutes, the police arrived at the scene and upon receiving the first information from Evelyn's parents, they went to the neighbor's house to investigate. The officers knocked and knocked on the door, but like the young woman's parents, they got no response. The police then decided to check the backyard of the house to see if they found anything, but there was nothing. Despite not having a warrant to enter the property, they knew that every second was crucial and from the account of Evelyn's parents, everything indicated that she could be at risk. So the cops opted to break into the property which was later discovered to belong to a 20-year-old man named Gerald Zimmerman. Once inside the house, the police carried out searches, but neither Evelyn nor Gerald were at the scene. With that, an alert was issued about the girl's disappearance and also about Gerald Zimmerman as the prime suspect. A few hours later, the police discovered that Gerald had another property registered in his name, which was located at 73B Main Street. They moved quickly towards it, and when they knocked on the door, Gerald calmly answered it. The cops asked him where Evelyn was, to which the man replied that she had just done the cleaning, got paid, and left. Suspicious, the police asked if they could look inside the house he was in, and Gerard, apparently not caring, said yes. The officer did a thorough search of this other property, the surrounding area, and also Gerard's car, but they found nothing that could link it to Evelyn's disappearance so Garrett was not detained. A few minutes after the police left, Garrett's sister, a woman named Deborah Kiefer, called for the officer to return, as Garrett was threatening to take his own life. Upon returning, the police managed to calm Garrett who said he was doing it because his marriage was ending and because he had several other personal problems. Because of this, Garrett ended up being taken to a psychiatric hospital where he was admitted. The next day, Authorities and several townspeople who learned of Evelyn Fisher's disappearance searched every possible location. They searched the woods, houses, rivers and lakes in hopes of finding any sign of the young woman, but unfortunately they found nothing. While Garrett remained in the hospital, he remained a prime suspect in Evelyn Fisher's disappearance. A few days later, the police got a warrant to search the house where Evelyn was last seen and also a warrant to impound Garrett's car. This time, a forensic team would carry out the thorough inspection of both the suspect's house and car. Inside the house, no evidence was found to indicate that any crime had taken place. Despite this, the police didn't give up and they, along with the townspeople, continued to look for Evelyn. It had been weeks, and in August, divers searched the bottoms of rivers and lakes while people searched for her in mudflats and shallow water. This was one of the largest searches in the entire history of the state of Pennsylvania, and one of the longest as well. Even as the days passed, the community didn't give up and continued looking for the girl. The police were sure that Garrett Zimmerman was not only responsible for the disappearance of the young woman, but had already taken her life. But no matter how much they investigated and searched, they couldn't find the body or any evidence that could corroborate it. So, in an attempt to get some help or leads that could help solve the case, Lancaster County Prosecutor Michael H. Rack called Stefan Schwart, a friend who was known for helping people in a somewhat unusual way. 
Stefan was known for innovating a technique he called mental martial arts, which consisted of letting the mind leave the body and look for people, places and objects that would be looking for, lost in time and space. He made it clear that it was not a matter of mediumship, nor a psychic ability, but a practice that anyone with adequate training could do. Michael sent two photos of Evelyn and asked, where is she and what's her condition, and said nothing about the investigations. Stefan got in touch with two of his students who were doing the mental training and sent them the photos. Minutes later, he sent the following reply to Michael. Both stated that she is no longer alive. One of them described that she was in a wooded and mountainous area and that she had suffocated, while the other said that she had suffered a trauma to the head. On October 9, 1980, after more than two months of searching, a New Holland City police officer named Rodney Hartman was searching alone walking through a wooded area in the Welsh mountains, about four miles southeast of Evelyn's home. After a few hours of walking, Rodney found a partially buried body that was 30 meters into the forest and 150 meters from Route 897. He quickly communicated with his colleagues and soon a police team arrived on the scene. In a short time, the police could verify that the body belonged to Evelyn Fisher. According to the same police officers, the body was without clothes and already in an advanced state of decomposition. Its arms had been tied behind with a piece of its jeans and there was a sock together with a ball stuck in its mouth. In a search carried out around the area where the body was found, the police were able to locate the rest of Evelyn's clothes that were torn and about 60 meters from her body. Subsequently, the body was sent for an autopsy which found that the cause of death was due to blunt trauma to the head region. It was also found that Evelyn was the victim of forced intercourse, something that the police already suspected from the way in which her body had been found. On November 6, 1980, Garrett Zimmerman, the prime suspect, was arrested and charged with a crime against Evelyn Fisher. During Garrett's hospital stay, Dr. Lawrence Drasdale, who was a psychologist at the hospital, said that the man had confessed to him that he remembered hitting a girl very hard on the head, but that he didn't remember anything else. Dr. Lawrence filed a report that said that Garrett Zimmerman had dissociative disorder, anxiety, paranoia of a loosely structured nature, and was generally depressed about anything. Still in that report, there was a statement that Garrett could have suffered an outbreak and thus committed the crime without even knowing what he was doing. During his pre-trial, which took place on April 2, 1981, Garrett was found to be mentally competent and filed his case as a normal defendant. As the trial progressed, everyone learned of the sheer brutality of what had happened. According to the prosecution, Evelyn Fisher had been hit in the face, her clothes were cut with scissors, she was a victim of forced intercourse and died due to not being able to breathe due to the ball and sock that were placed in her mouth. However, during the trial, as there was not enough evidence to prove forced intercourse, they didn't get a conviction for this crime, since the defense claimed that Garrett had only cut the girl's clothes but did nothing to her. In fact, the coroner proved that there were forced intercourse, but he could not testify at the trial due to another commitment, and without him, it was not possible to prove this crime. Garrett never told the police exactly what happened, but they have the theory that because Evelyn Fisher physically resembles his wife, who had filed for divorce days before it all happened, the man ended up taking all his anger and frustration out on the girl. Garrod still claims that he doesn't remember anything he did that day and that the only memory he has is of him hitting Evelyn in the head. After the trial ended on May 6, 1981, Garrod Zimmerman was found guilty of the crime against Evelyn Fisher. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The crime against Evelyn Fisher not only shocked the small town of New Holland, but also the entire region, specifically Lancaster County, which is the county that the city is a part of. At the time of the crime, the city had just over 4,000 inhabitants, and a crime of this type happening there was something that didn't cross anyone's mind. After all, the population was very apprehensive, and many girls who provided services to neighbors and other townspeople stopped for a while due to fear. Even though it took place over 40 years ago, it is said that even today, the crime against Evelyn Fisher is a bitter memory in the small town of New Holland. Alright folks, that's it for today. 
Thanks for watching until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.